Hey guys, Irene here. Today I have a Photoshop tutorial. Your prayers have been answered because so many of you guys have been asking me for a Photoshop tutorial. So here it is. This is a picture from my last photo shoot. I'm going to be showing you guys how I make this image a lot more vibrant, crisp, how I add a little bit more of yellow to make this image look more fall because there were still a lot of green leaves in here and how I just kind of separate my subject from the background even more. So yeah, let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is duplicate my layer as usual. Right click on your background layer and press duplicate layer. So I'm going to go straight into camera raw filter. I absolutely love using camera raw. If you don't have that, why? <laughs> go get it. Um, but if you don't want to for some reason, you can go into Lightroom and you'll be able to do pretty much the same exact things that I'm doing in camera raw. Uh, I just prefer everything to be in Photoshop. It's a lot easier and you'll see another reason why I like using camera raw instead of Lightroom. But that's later, so stay tuned. So I'm going to go ahead, play with the temperature a little bit. I'm going to make it a little bit more warm. And I'm going to add just a little bit of this pinkish tint to it. I want to take out that green as much as I can, even before we start uh, working on the background separately. Uh, don't go too much with the warmth. Uh, actually, the picture was pretty warm to start with. Um, we had it nicely backlit. Um, there are lots of spots that are a little bit overexposed here. So I'm going to bring those highlights down. Let's also use a little bit of dehaze. Just a little bit here, a little bit of contrast, uh, just a tiny bit of clarity. Let's add some more vibrance to the picture. Okay. So this is it for right now. And as you can see, it already looks a lot nicer, a lot more warm and fall like. I'm going to press OK here. Uh, I don't really need to use a second layer, so I'm just going to merge them right now. I'm going to do another duplicate layer and I'm going to go into my camera raw again. So now here I want to work on just her, just the model. So please do not excuse the background, only focus on the model and what it's doing to the model. So I'm going to make her just a little bit brighter. I'm going to dehaze her a lot more. Bring the shadows up just a little bit. Add a little bit of clarity and then a little bit more of exposure again. And let's dehaze her even more. Okay, that looks great. So I'm going to press OK. And now this is the reason why I like using Camera Raw. So we did all of this on a separate layer, which now allows us to apply these settings only to specific parts of the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and press um, this little button right here, which will create a layer mask. And now I'm going to press Control I to invert it. Um, now I'm able to pick up my brush going to make it bigger and I can paint on what we did only to the spots that I want. So I'm going to start painting it on top of my model. Now I'm always using a soft rounded brush and I recommend you guys do the same. It makes everything really soft and the edges are usually pretty bl nicely blurred. So it looks very seamless when you're applying different layers with the brush. Okay, so see this is before and after. Hope you guys can see the difference, but now she's a lot more crisp and clear and that really helps us to separate her from the background. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and merge those layers. I just prefer merging layers. If you don't, you can keep them. I like to keep my working space very clean. Just a personal preference. There's no reason really behind it. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate the layer again. And now we're going to make the background a lot more yellow. We're going to go into camera raw again. 
you guys i've been loving using the camera raw it is just so so simple especially on layers like that okay so we are going to go to the calibration right over here. And this is something that a lot of people are using right now. If you've seen those teals and oranges in pictures, this is how a lot of people are getting them. Okay, so what we're going to do is on the green right here, we're going to drop it down. Just like that. And then on the red drop it down just a little bit we don't want those yellows to be super super yellow you can just kind of play around here and see what every single slider does we can add a little bit of orange right here All right, so here's the before and after. I like this result, so I'm gonna press OK. As you can see, the background became a lot, a lot more orange. So now I do not want this to be applied to my model, so I'm gonna just take my eraser and just start erasing it from the model. Especially her blouse. Her blouse has a lot of reds in it and I don't really want it to be affected by what we did to the background and her hair too we want to keep those nice bright colors okay so now the whole background is a lot more orange but there is just this one thing where I actually really do enjoy a little bit of green peeking through but it has to be just the right amount of green so I'm gonna go ahead into selective color I'm going to choose the greens. I'm going to bring them back here and this way. So we need to put this above here so that it affects this layer. So you see the now the after I just find whenever you bring the greens to this blue side on the yellow slider and then here to the green, it just makes the green um, harmonize with the yellow and the oranges a lot more while we're here let's go to the reds and i want to make them a little bit darker and a little bit more red and let's go into the yellows make them maybe not as vibrant they're a little bit too vibrant for me right now Okay, that looks, mm, let's see. Let's just leave the yellows where they are. Um, I'm going to play around with the red a little bit more. Okay, that looks perfect. So this is before and after a little bit of the color correction. Again, just making that blouse a lot more red makes her stand out from the background a lot more. And I hope you guys can notice the green, how it looks so much nicer now with the oranges. Uh, let me just show you guys quickly what that did for us. I just grouped those. So this is before and after some of the color correction. Okay, so that looks great. I love the way it looks. I'm going to go ahead, duplicate my layer again. Some of these hot spots are still a little bit too hot for me and distracting. So I'm going to go into, again, my camera raw filter. And I'm going to bring those highlights down completely. And maybe even whites over here. So as you can see, that also affected her um, face, her skin which we don't really want to do. So again, I'm just going to apply the layer mask to that layer, control I, and then picking up the brush, I'm going to be only painting that where I find too much highlight. All right, that looks great. So this is before and after. As you can see, it just took out some of those really hot spots and it looks a lot nicer in my opinion. 
All right, so the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer again um, and we're going to go to liquefy this time. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of fix this just a little bit. So her shirt was kind of came out of the skirt and it is quite noticeable for me. So I'm going to try to fix it just a little bit. So I'm just going to try to bring the skirt's band a little bit higher so it doesn't look like it, the shirt is coming out of it too much. <laughs> and as usual, I'm just going to go ahead and make her hair just a little bit bigger. Honestly, very, very small little adjustments like this, but they do all of the difference in the picture. Trust me. All right, so that's it. As you can see, I just kind of pulled the band just a little bit higher and I think it already makes such a big difference, right? And with the hair as well. I really like what it does. Uh, next thing, I think I'm going to do a little bit of skin retouch. There's literally almost nothing that needs to be done here. I'm going to switch to patch tool. It's my favorite one. And I'm just selecting the spot that I don't like and moving it to a spot where the skin is clear, which literally her whole skin, her whole face has really clear skin. So there's not much I'm going to do here. All right, so before and after on the skin retouch, I literally just did a tiny bit here. Let's try a gradient map. I think a gradient map will look actually really, really nice here. So I want to make a really warm one. So I'm going to double click over here to select a color. Um, let's do something almost, yeah, like that. And then for highlights, we're going to make it warm as well. Okay, I think something like that would be quite nice. So usually there's two options for me. I either do multiply or I do a soft light. I think the multiply will work really nice here just because the image is pretty bright. So I'm just usually go ahead and take down the opacity. So you see the difference before and after of this. It makes the whole tonality of the image change. I think I'm going to make it just a little bit. Yeah, that looks great. And then I'm going to go into selective color again, because as you can see, it kind of dulled down those greens there. So I want to bring it back, uh, back to the green and then a little bit to the blue. Oh, that looks so nice. And then it dulled down some of the reds as well. So let's kind of bring it back to life. And let's see with the yellows. All right, that looks great. So let's group those up and see what we did here. So before and after. Yeah, that looks great, I think. All right, so uh, let's do just a little bit of dodge and burn. So I'm going to go into my curves. I'm going to bring this up right here. Then I'm going to press Control I. And now again, for this, it's the same principle again and again that I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this all over her. But now I'm going to take my eraser tool. Or what you can also do is take the white and just the white color and it's going to act as the eraser. Black adds color, white takes it out. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna take this out of my model now. Like that highlight that I added, I want it to only be behind her. As you, I don't know if you guys can see over here, um, it's kind of showing like what it's doing. We added like a little bit of a highlight just behind the model. Uh, actually, I'm going to tone it down just a little bit, but here it is. It again just helps to separate her from the background even more. Uh, and now I'm going to do one for a slight vignette. So I'm going to go again into curves. But this time I'm going to bring this down right here. Again, control I to invert. And here, let's change it to the black color and show you how you can paint with the black color. This one has to be white. Here we go. So we're doing a slight vignette here. Mm. I'm going to delete it just off a few places that I feel like. Actually, let's take this one. I want to add a little bit of highlight just over here. Alright, so let me just show you what that did quickly again. Okay, you guys see how it kind of changes the whole light dynamic here? I love doing this kind of gradient. Lighter in the very middle where the subject is, and then a little bit of a vignette on the sides. It, may, it kind of pulls you in a lot more into the image. Okay, so let's do some final adjustments and we're almost done with the picture so I'm gonna duplicate the layer filter camera raw I want to make her even brighter again because now that we've been playing with the picture I think she kind of disappears into the background a little bit too much I like to add a lot more clarity and dehaze to my subject okay All right, that looks great. So again, we're going to give it a layer mask, control I, and now we can go ahead and paint that over just our model. Okay, that looks awesome. Do you see how it just makes her stand out so, so much more? Uh, I think it makes such a big difference. All right, so I think this is, let's add, let's play with the select. I always go to selective color just one last time to just play around with it just a little bit more. I'm going to give the greens just a little bit more of the blueness to them. Um, just, you know, just make it a little bit more vibrant. One last time. Actually, let's go into blacks and bring it to, yeah, just one to the yellow side. See how it took out some of the blue out of her black skirt? I don't know if you guys can notice that, but I prefer that a lot more. Okay. So this is it. It's done. The very last thing that I do is I sharpen up the image. So it actually came up pretty sharp. I shot it at 1.2 as usual, but I still like to sharpen the images up just a little bit more for web. Um, if you guys want to know how I do this, how I made this preset, you can watch my video on how I sharpen the images. I will leave it in the description down below, but I just play this action. See, it sharpens it up. It's a little bit too much for this image, so I'm going to just lower the opacity to about that. See the difference before and after that it makes? It really, really helps the image to just look so much more crisp. So this is it. The image is done. Uh, let me just show you quickly the before and after. All right. So here is before and after. Before and after. So the before looks 
quite washed out. Um, it's just something that normally happens during that time of the day if you're shooting wide open and kind of into the sun. And just in general, your raw images will never look as vibrant as they do after editing. Uh, the camera just doesn't see some of the colors as well as our eyes do. Uh, so I highly recommend, you know, you guys learn some of these basics of editing to make your images stand out and look so much more vibrant and alive. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you would like to see more uh, and let me know what kind of editing tutorials you would like to see in the future. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.